Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is a very special and magical episode number 29. Why? Clearly. <laughs> we've got the, uh, for those listening on a podcast, right. we've, got, <laughs> we've got the uh, the ugly sweaters on. So, uh, I don't know, actually yours isn't really ugly. It's Let's say Who said ugly? It's very nice. I, I like have it. a sweater on. That is true. <laughs> well, uh, episode number 29, uh, I know you've got a couple uh, in mind. Let's see, Ryan Klo. Yeah, that's correct. And Mike Vernon? Chloe. Yeah, yeah. Vernon. Vernon, yeah. That's a good one, too. So, hey, uh, on this episode, we'll be talking about the Eric Carlson suspension, um, whether or not, well, what we think about it, whatever. Um, any concerns that we might have with Vlasic or that the fan base may have with Vlasic, uh, celebrating Jumbo's big milestone. Yep. We'll go over the games of just this past week, yep. and we'll also look ahead to next week's games. That and we'll also talk about real fans. <laughs> real fans. Real fans. Not fake fans, just real fans. <laughs> Very good. Uh, you ready to start the show? Ready. Okay, well, if you are a subscriber, Santa's going to bring you something nice. And if you're not, well, I, I hope you cook the coal. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about Eric Carlson and the suspension that he was dealt. Yeah, he got a two-game suspension. Um, I, when I watched the game and saw it live, I wasn't so sure at first. Um, watching it in real time, I thought he hit shoulder on shoulder and got his head afterwards. But after seeing the slow play, yeah, you know, slow mo replays several several times, uh, he did hit him in the head. And I understand where the league is coming from. They're trying to get rid of these headshots, and I don't necessarily disagree with it. Um, I thought one game would have been fair. I think two's a little bit harsh, uh, considering he's never really had a history of, right. of doing these kinds of things. Um, but at the same time, you can look at the league trying to maybe send a message to the rest of the league. Uh, and then tonight's game, we saw Oliver ekman Larson kind of do a right. similar thing. So it'll be interesting to see, and as of the recording tonight, they haven't announced anything. Um, there's going to be a three-day break right now of the entire NHL, so there won't be any games. So they have a little bit more time than yeah. doing uh, Carlson's the day before a game or the day of the game. So um, I think two games is a little harsh. Uh, I think it's still within reason. Um, so I, I don't know. It was interesting to see the team without him today. Yeah, I saw a tweet that you threw out there saying that it, it looks weird to have Eric Carlson not on the ice, so I guess that means he's the shark now. Um, you know, I, I didn't like that it was a two-game suspension. Again, I'm with you. I feel like it was okay to, to suspend the guy, you know, for a game or to fine him. I, the fines are really just a slap on the wrist. The, the amount that they fine these players, they donate in a, in a day anyway. So That, really that might get it, negotiated but. later in the, in the next CBA agreement, yeah. though. But I think one game would have been fair for a guy who doesn't have a history of this, has been in the league for a very long time, and, and hasn't played like that. There was also no, no penalty called on the play. Yeah. So the refs didn't think it was a dirty hit when it happened. Right. And, and I'm not saying it was, a it was definitely a dirty hit. I, don't, I mean, I don't think there was any malicious intent on Carlson's part to, to hit the guy in the head. Um, he just timed it wrong and, and came across and hit him in the head, unfortunately. Right. Um, yeah, and as far as Oliver ekman Larson's uh, headshot to LeBanc in the game um, today, Arizona, mm -hmm. um, I, to me the bar's been set. If if what Carlson did is a two game suspension, and he's been in this league for a while, and has no history of it, didn't really even intend to hit him in the head, and he gets two games, then Oliver Le Oliver ekman Larson should get two games. Now I know you're saying the Department of Player Safety is <laughs> wildly. Um, Inconsistent, I guess, with yes. how they, they just kind of throw a dart at a board with the blindfold on Basically. and whatever shows up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I, I think, you know, if you're going to be consistent, then that's the bar. There's a guy who has no history of this and you gave him two games. So Oliver Ekman Larson, the headshot on LeBanc looks more intentional than Eric Carlson's hit to the head. So I would think at least two games. Yeah. And, and we talked about this uh, during the live. There was a question that came up from somebody, which if you haven't checked out our live segments, um, I check them out. They're, they're a lot of fun. Yeah. We tend to do them before we shoot, so Sunday nights, a little plug there. Um, <laughs> but one of the questions was, if, if the guy didn't get hurt, would he have been suspended, or maybe only one game if he wasn't hurt? Mm -hmm. And I, there might be a little bit something to that, uh, since there was no penalty call, but the guy was injured, he didn't return to the game, and he should have gotten help off the ice. Another thing that we had talked about, <laughs> yeah. that I was kind of shocked that yeah. uh, none of the players helped him get off the ice, because he was really struggling, mm -hmm. uh, almost fell over a couple times on his way off. 
uh, but none of his teammates came by to help him and skate him off. Yeah, which is there, crazy. W- one of the comments was, "I'm surprised that nobody came to his aid um, in terms of standing up for him, and that nobody also came to his aid in helping him get off the ice." Which, yeah, it was kind of weird um, seeing that there was no, I don't say com- camaraderie really, but that's kind of what it is. There was there was no offer for help from his teammates, which is kind of odd, you know. Yeah. But. Is what it is. Um, again, I'm looking for the same level of suspension uh, for all of Oliver Ekman Larson. I'm having a real hard time saying that name. I say OEL. OEL. I'm having a hard time with yeah. OEL um, if he does not get a, a two game suspension because um, it seems like that is as fair in terms of um, you know the the type of player that they are. They're not ones that go out there and look for these malicious hits. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes it happens. Again, OELs looked more intentional than uh, EK65s. So I'm just going all abbreviations now <laughs> um, so I, I mean that, that's what I'd be looking for so anyway right. uh, moving on from that um, Mark Edward Vlasic um, not playing up to the par that we, we we've seen him play before mm-hmm. um, somebody had mentioned a puck to the head last season with a concussion protocol all in effect there mm-hmm. and that he hasn't really played the same since then and I don't know if that's um, really a cause for concern or if he's just having a bit of a bad year right now? What are your thoughts? I, I, it's hard to say. Uh, Kevin Kurz actually just came out with an article tonight um, touching on it along with some other things on Hurdle. But um, I, it, to me, I think it's... It, there's a lot of things going on. I don't think it's. I don't think it's narrowed to one thing. I don't. I. I don't think you can pinpoint it to one thing. Um, I don't think it's an injury. I don't think uh, it was a shot to the head. I think... Uh, just a multiple things. One of them being, um, if you look at his advanced stats, him and Braun are at the bottom yeah. of the team in terms of uh, shot attempts for. Um, most of that is you have Burns and Carlson who aren't paired together as your other two pairings on the team. When you have an offensive zone start, you're going to start one of those two pairings um, just because they're going to give you a chance to score a goal right. every time. Or both of them. Or both of them, yeah. right. Um, just depending on who's not tired. Uh, that's that's how you roll the dice. Who's not tired, Carlson or Burns? Okay, get out there. <laughs> so um, unfortunately for Vlasic and Braun, I think their stats are going to take a hit because of it. Um, they're, they're getting more of the defensive zone starts than yeah. Carlson or Burns are. So um, you can't quite look at the advanced stats and go, oh, here's the problem. Right. You can't you can't look at um, an injury and go, oh, he got injured. You can't look at his plus minus because, I mean, even in the article he mentions he gets on the ice and, he, and yeah. they score a goal. And he's got four of those this year. And he leads the team in minus. I think he was a minus, yeah, I forgot to look it up. Uh, like 14 or 13, yeah. somewhere in there, yeah. Um, and he's fourth, in, fourth worst in the league for, yeah. for a plus minus. So... He's having a bad year. He's just he's not doing well. Too and we well. see, you know, he's he's at the bottom of the pile in terms of plus minus. And for those of you who, who don't like the plus minus stat, that's fine. We look at the advanced stats, and he was like forty something percent or whatever it was mm-hmm. in terms of the shot attempt percentages, which basically means they're they're shooting on him more than he's helping uh, generate a shot on goal the other way. Um, you know, your point's valid. He has more defensive zone starts. I also feel he's just not getting as much time on ice as he's used to, and maybe that's throwing him off. Um, somebody had asked, you know, does it feel like, uh, you know, maybe he's not jealous, but he's having a hard time with Eric Carlson being on the team, um, taking away his minutes. And I don't think there's a personal side to that. I think if there is anything to that, it's just the fact that he is playing less minutes. Maybe he's just used to playing more and he's having a rough go at it. Uh, but yeah, you're right. He's going to have more defensive zone starts. I mean, he probably had more defensive zone starts before Eric Carlson was there anyway. Mm-hmm. But you know, he's not getting those opportunities to really help the team get up and and score goals and whatnot. He's he's more playing on the defensive side, even more heavily now than we've seen him before. Mm-hmm. But we're seeing a lot of concerning things. We've seen some lackadaisical plays. Um, him kind of giving up on skating to chase after the puck or. Um, you know, a guy, a back check, right? right? Or there's someone who's who's ahead of him and just taps in for a goal, and he's a whole like stick length behind them, right? We've mm-hmm. seen a lot of that kind of stuff, and I mean, I don't know. It's a little bit concerning seeing right now like what he's going through, but I don't know if they, you think there's cause concern, you know, going forward or not. I to me, I I don't think so. I think there's just so many different factors in it that um, you can't pinpoint it to one thing. You mm-hmm. can't just be like, oh, he's he gave up on the year, or he's he got paid so he doesn't care anymore. Yeah. I don't think that's it at all. And for people who want to trade him, he has a no movement clause, so <laughs> it, he's just going to say no. I don't want to get traded. Or what? people want to trade him, <laughs> right? So I mean, um, 
that, yeah, that's that's a funny yeah, joke. Everybody wants to trade everyone. Yeah, so um, it's okay. to me, it reminds me of of Patrick Marlowe in when he was a shark, and it was the O what was it O seven oh eight O seven oh eight season. Yeah. He had a very down year. He was at the end of the year, he was thirty points less from the year before. A uh, huge, huge drop off. First, one of the first times he hadn't scored twenty goals in a long time mm-hmm. in his career. And everyone was screaming for his head and wanted him traded, and obviously they didn't, and right. for good reason. He's a very good player. It was just a down year. People have a down year. And what what is bad for Vlasic, what makes it worse, is he's in his first year of his new contract. Yeah. So it's it's if he didn't have that new contract, people would just say, uh, he's our fifth defenseman now. Like, it doesn't matter. So and he's only getting paid whatever he was before five million six million. Now he's getting seven million. It's 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 exponentially making things worse. Yeah. And I think it's just getting everyone wants a, a a reason for it and want an easy explanation and there isn't one. Right. Well, I think an easy explanation not just for Vlasic, but for the Shark season so far. And again, in both cases, there's not one thing to to point at. But mm-hmm. um, one other player that's a longtime Shark um, had a milestone recently. Jumbo Joe Thornton passing Marcel Dion on the all-time assist list. He's uh, sitting alone in tenth place now, which is awesome. So it's incredible. It's uh, it's amazing. It's it's really he's a living legend. The guy is. And I know Aaron doesn't think it's possible, but I think anything is possible. And with the power <laughs> of people voting online, uh, I think we should try to get Joe into the All Star game. Joe doesn't. Or Aaron doesn't necessarily believe it can happen I, but no I don't think it's going to happen every time a bell rings Jumbo Joe gets a vote for the all-star game that's ding ding <laughs> so yeah I, I'd love to see it happen I think he deserves uh, one more all-star game in him at least and, and if he could do it in San Jose that'd be the best because he wouldn't have to travel so. I'm not I'm not against Joe going to the sure. all-star yeah. game I just think there's more deserving players on the Sharks Fair to go uh, I mean the top four scores was Couture Burns Pavelski and mm-hmm. Meyer so uh, I would like to see two of those guys go before sending Jumbo. Maybe okay. Jumbo is the third guy if they can get a third guy in. Sure. Then I'd be like, okay, sure. But I, I, I think Burns is having an amazing season. Mm-hmm. I think, uh, I mean, maybe not defensively because he's <laughs> not a defensive defenseman, but um, statistically, if I could say that word right. Statistically? Is, yeah. He's, doing, he's right? doing very well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> not a linguist. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so anyway, I'd like to see Burns <laughs> and and one of Couture or even Pavelski go. Pavelski's having um, a, a heck of a year right now. Twenty three goals. He's already surpassed his uh, goal total from the previous season. And we're not even halfway through the year yet. So, um, yes, he would be absolutely deserving. Although he's he's been there a couple times now. I mean, he's getting to the point. I think it was the Winnipeg game where he, he's getting shot at and it's going off of him and in the goal. <laughs> I think it went off his arm or went off his elbow or something. The, did it really? Yeah, the second. I thought I got the shaft, but no, I don't yeah. think. I think it was off of his body. I don't think it was. Yeah, he's in the right place. Exactly. Right? It's all that matters. It's just it's one of those years for Pavelski. It's the complete opposite of Vlasic. <laughs> and everything's going in. Nice. Well, I guess everything's going in for Vlasic the other way, but right <laughs> is what it is. So um, those things aside, let's mm-hmm. look uh, at the weekend review. So we had a game in Minnesota that was the highlight. Now. Prior to this show, the the previous episode, we had said that we thought, well, you thought that Minnesota was probably going to be the toughest game no, of I think the road it, trip, and I had thought that Winnipeg was going to be the toughest game of the road trip, but, but Winnipeg sorry, was not at road home. Trip. Jeez, I keep saying at home. Why? Yeah. I don't know. Minnesota what was oh, in the Minnesota. the week stretch is what I yeah. mean to say. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, so Minnesota, um, 4 0 win in, in or with I, Minnesota. Yeah, I think that was the most complete game we've seen yeah. from the Sharks. Um, I think Martin Jones looked incredible. Uh, we we were looking through the highlights again to, to do another refresher before the show, and um, the game started off where Eric Stahl had a breakaway, kind of partial breakaway, and mm-hmm. shot it and got it through Jones, and he got it right under his, his uh, right arm, and he clipped it just enough to deflect it, and it hit the post and went out. If that had gone in, that would have changed the tone of the entire game. Oh, yeah. Who knows what would have happened. So um, Minnesota definitely had their chances, and... and uh, grade A chances and Jones had a couple robs. Um, that's the Jones I think we're used to seeing in the playoffs. Right. I think uh, what I've been saying all season, he's going to get better. He's going to get more consistent and um, just gets into a flow. And I think we're seeing Martin Jones starting to 
really turned around um, and play really well. Yeah. Uh, 26 save shutout for Martin Jones. Awesome effort that night. Uh, another guy who got a couple to, to assist was Radim Shimmick. Um, stepping in, offering a little bit of the offensive punch alongside mm-hmm. Brent Burns there. We've, we've seen him... You know, be the big, uh, not big really, not in terms of stature, but the the hits, the hits are gigantic. Um, the the guy knows how to throw the body, but it was great to see him put himself on the scoreboard as well, get some some recognition other than just being able to slam people. Yeah, so, it's nice yeah. to be a well-rounded player, I yeah. think, especially in the game this day, where yeah, you can't just be a bruiser anymore. You have to be able to move the puck and and get on the score sheet, yeah. so he's doing very well. It's great to see somebody playing well alongside Burns and finally complimenting Burns uh, and his play style, being able to uh, be, even if he's smaller, being a big, hard body to, to play against mm-hmm. and giving Burns that opportunity to get the puck and, and move it up the ice. Another player who did really well that game, Logan Couture, picked up two goals. Um, that's really all I wanted to say about that. Just good job, <laughs> Logan. <laughs> he got two goals on that game. That was awesome. So uh, Minnesota game again, all around complete effort. The team played really well and mm-hmm. picked up a shutout. I think defensively, that was the thing. Defensively, that game we also played pretty well. Yep, and it was on the road in Minnesota, and it's a very tough building to play yeah. in. And I don't think historically the Sharks have done very well in Minnesota. So uh, good, really good to get that yeah. road win. So then we come back home and we play against the Winnipeg Jets. And I uh, think it, that was going to be the hardest okay. of the four. I think that's what I said last week. I'm probably wrong. Okay. But um, <laughs> Winnipeg is one of the stronger teams in, in the West, the mm-hmm. Western Conference. And um, I, I think I tweeted this out beforehand that this could be a preview of the Western Conference Finals just based on the way that the playoffs are now. So uh, we could be seeing the Sharks in Winnipeg or the Sharks in Nashville, you know, assuming that the Sharks are going to the finals. Um, then uh, this was a great matchup, and I don't think it disappointed other than the result. I right. think the game itself was fantastic, uh, great for TV, great for ratings, great for the, the league. Um, two high-scoring teams, two very deep high-scoring teams. Right. Uh, trading punches going back and forth. So, um, unfortunately, the Sharks were on the wrong end of it. Mm-hmm. Um, the Winnipeg Jets scored on a really funky goal where um, <laughs> where Jones was really far out of the net, yeah. very uncharacteristic of him. Um, he kind of slid out on... Uh, it was like a breakdown. It was a turnover, and it was kind of a breakdown on both the forwards and the defensemen yeah. trying to... So, that, that game, what basically what happened was 3-3, and the puck gets flipped into the zone. And Braun and Vlasic are on the ice again. We just talked about having some struggles, and and we should say Braun's having some struggles too in terms of the stats and whatnot. He's mm-hmm. pretty much just he's as, right next to Vlasic. He's right next to Vlasic, yeah. which makes sense. They only play together, right? But um, the puck gets flipped in, and it gets trickles right across the blue line. Vlasic does this kind of not lazy, but kind of half efforted swat at the puck, and it kind of knocks it towards the blue line. Doesn't get out. As soon as he's done doing that, both Vlasic and Braun peel off towards the boards, and it leaves the middle wide open. Uh, a Jets player picks up the puck, skates right into the center there, and they both scramble to get back to the middle. So they pinch off, uh, both of them pinch towards the center to get that puck away, and then the pass comes across to Jones' right hand side. Mm-hmm. Well, now Jones sees that he's got this gigantic shooty lane in front of him, and so he steps up to try to take the angle away. The pass goes across because Braun has left his guy, you know, uh, out open, wide open, and now it goes across to that player, whoever it was, and Jones has to scramble off to his right to kind of get back to the post. Now, I I would like to have seen Jones maybe just go straight back to the post instead of being so aggressive, yeah, jumping out and trying to get in front of that guy, taking out the angle because what he did was yeah he took himself way out of the net, and I don't know if he necessarily meant to do that because he kind of slid and kept going yeah then he got tangled with Braun, with Braun right. and that that got him even later getting back into right. the cr- into the crease and, yeah. and that's when they wrapped it around and passed it to the guy open and and put it away buried it buried yeah. it through a bunch of diving sharks players mm-hmm. to desperately block the puck I think there was about three minutes left when that happened something like that yeah it yeah. was late in the game we, we lost it in late minutes um and, and, you know, I, I had been going back and forth with somebody on uh, the Facebook Sharks page or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, he had said, you know, is this soft enough for you? Because we were talking about if a goal is soft or not or whatever. I, I think that was an easy goal. My, defini- my definition of a soft goal is a little bit different than just being an easy goal. But that aside, um, I feel like it, it was an easy goal for them to score because we didn't have a goaltender in the net at the time. <laughs> um, but he gave me a screenshot of 
of Jones, you know, feet out of the net, like way off in the side with Braun on top of him. And the, the net's surrounded by Sharks players and not a goaltender. And so he's saying, is this soft enough for you? And um, again, my definition is different. But I also thought it was really convenient for that screenshot to be up there without any other context of what happened in the play. Again, I just described what happened in the play to you. And there's more to it than just Jones was over there. I mean, there's a whole defensive breakdown that happened. We can't just excuse that and say, oh, it was Jones' fault, right? Jones is way out of the net. Yeah, he was out of the net because he was trying to react in a certain way to what was happening in front of him defensively that should never have happened. Mm -hmm. Rather than swatting the puck away, maybe, I don't know, take possession of the puck and curl it towards the boards then, right? Yeah. There's other things that could have happened and just that wasn't, that was kind of a brain fartish type move. Totally. Last it day, was yeah. just a breakdown and unfortunately it was the th three minutes left in the game. So yeah. it was just terrible timing to have such a breakdown now, do I overall. Think, yeah. Do I think it was overly aggressive and maybe he shouldn't have made that play? Yeah, sure. I think it was overly aggressive and he slid himself way out of the net. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Braun you know, tackles him essentially, but you wouldn't have been tackled if you didn't put yourself in that position at the same time. Again, you got to look at the whole play. You can't right. just look at a screenshot and say, oh, look how bad Jones is. That's not the case. So, so then that carries into the following night against right. LA, mm -hmm. right? So in, it, we'll talk a little bit more about the game, but in overtime... There is a play where Kovalchuk scored. The puck comes out of the, the offensive zone, the Sharks' offensive zone. And to me, it looked like Jones could have skated out of the net and gotten the puck and cleared it. And instead, he leaves it, and Kovalchuk picks it up and gets a breakaway and scores, and they win the game. So if you... I was kind of like... I think I wrote this on Twitter. Yeah. I was like, I think he could have gotten there. I don't understand. And I don't... I didn't... You know, I'm watching on TV, so I can't see the whole ice. I don't know how much time and space that there was in between... Um, but if you're Jones, it's probably in your head that oh, I just lost the game. The <laughs> he lost the game, but I, I yeah. you know, messed up on that lot in the last game. So I'm going to stick in the net. Um, I have a better chance doing that than coming out and getting burned by Kovalchuk. Mm -hmm. And that's what, I mean, he got burned anyway. But um, that's probably in his head, and he, he hesitated. And if you hesitate, you're you're dead duck in the water so well, you, if you're going to hesitate you shouldn't be trying to, to be in a foot race with right. Andy Kovalchuk right I looked at the play again and I, I mean we'll have to look at it again maybe but I, I thought that um, Kovalchuk was basically pick, he picked up the puck at the blue line Aaron um, thinks otherwise which we'll have to look at it later but um, I don't know for, for my money as Jones I don't think Jones is the type we saw a clip of Holpe I don't know if you've seen this or not but Holpe uh, just sprinted to the blue line, knocking a puck away, yeah, and there's he, some, he flopped there's around and did that. I don't think Jones is that type no, of goaltender no. where he tries to get into a foot race anytime. There's some goalies that can yeah. really handle the puck and skate. Like uh, Alex Stalock was yeah. was excellent at it. He would have came out. He probably would have shot the puck if he <laughs> was on the ice. So um, certain goalies can do that, yeah. and Jones is not one of those goalies. Yeah. He, he is not a fast or fleet-footed skater. So And that's a very unorthodox thing to do for a goaltender to go out and skate like that. I mean, mm -hmm. That's why you see it. It's a highlight when a goaltender leaves his crease like that and goes up to the blue line. When you, I mean, Patrick Waugh deking out Gretzky at the center ice. I mean, mm -hmm. that's why it's a highlight because the goalie never goes out that far, right? Um, but, I don't know. I, I think that that game was a pretty good game the whole way through, right? Uh, we're still talking about Winnipeg. It was right. a pretty good game the whole way through. Had one weird breakdown. I didn't like the empty net um, awarded goal that they gave Ehlers or Ehlers, Ehlers. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I didn't like that. I thought that the while the hook or whatever it was was from behind, Carlson, Eric Carlson was right next to, I think it was Ehlers. Right. And that therefore he's not on a breakaway. So I had a hard time saying that that one should just be awarded. Regardless, we were down by a goal anyway, and whether or not we would have won the game had that not counted uh, doesn't matter. Who knows? We could have maybe tied it up. Sure. Again, you know, but I don't know. It, it was a funky hat trick because another one of his goals was the one that came off the stanchion and, and bounced in front right. of the net, which is just terrible luck. So the Sharks just didn't get the bounces enough mm -hmm. for to get it their way. So. Um, it was a close game. I think it could have gone either way. And unfortunately, it didn't go for the Sharks. And let's not forget, Winnipeg is a very, very good team. Right. And sometimes you're just going to get beat by a very good team. And frankly, I think we hung with them pretty much the entire game. Again, mm -hmm. it was 3-3 until that one weird defensive breakdown. I felt very uh, confident that the Sharks would be able to hang and beat them in a seven-game series after watching that game. Yeah, th and that's a good point. That's a very good point. You that, made the comment. That's how you kind of look about it. Yeah. You know, that's how I like to look at things and go, okay, if I if the Sharks are playing this team in a seven-game series, would they beat them? Would they get smoked by them? 
I think yeah. I think they could take Winnipeg. No, I think you're right. So moving on to L.A. Um, L.A. We had a funky 1 p.m. game in, in ah, Los Angeles. Yes, <laughs> oh, notoriously not so hot during the 1 p.m. games. Yeah, that was a home game, not in L.A. Right? No, not that was a home game. game. Did I say home game? I thought you said an away game. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so it was a 1 p.m. game. So 1 p.m. on the game. West Coast, either way. Yeah. So. It, it, yeah. The Sharks, I feel like again historically just don't do well yeah. in those afternoon games, and. Um, they look like they were still taking a nap, which I think I tweeted out earlier too, where uh, they just they didn't look like they were awake. They looked like they were flat on their skates. And um, in the third period, they came alive, yeah. and they were able to tie it at least and, and get a point. And then that's what we talked about earlier about the couple truck goal. You, you know why I, I blanked on whether it was home or away? They wore the white jerseys yes. when the Kings and came in. And I loved it. And it, <sighs> I missed the home whites. I was like, well, did, did Carolina's GM or owner call and say, yeah. no, I want them to wear white Well, they was wearing their grays, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's why. They probably called and asked to say, can we wear our grays? It's the second time this season. What's going on? The Sharks want to wear their whites at home. I don't, I don't buy it. I, I like, like it. it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, the LA game, I mean, we were, we were in that game uh, more towards the end because the LA went up, right? right. And so I like the fact that we didn't roll over. I like the, 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 the bite, if you will, of the Sharks, the effort right. that they put in. It was a little late, yes, but, uh, and it's a team that, frankly, we should be beating. I get that. Don't get me wrong. But regardless, you find yourself in a 2 0 hole. Either you roll over and die, or you say, okay, let's put the work boots on. And they did. So it was good to see them come back, tie it up. Yes, we should be beating them, but hey, if you're going to lose, I'd rather take a point out of it, right? They salvaged um, a point. I'll take the point. Yeah, I, I'm I'm more happy with uh, an overtime or shootout loss when they were losing and they get the tying goal to force yes. overtime because I feel like they they weren't going to get that point, but they got it, or they weren't going to get anything. So um, I'm okay with it, even though LA is at the bottom of the division. Um, at least they got a point when they probably shouldn't have because they were not playing very well. Right. during most of the game and the goal that got scored the game winner um again we talk about goals that are you know defensive breakdowns and it sounds like we're sticking up for jones a lot mm -hmm. part of it is because i i kind of am i mean when you've got a breakaway and it's kovalchuk and there's nobody else yeah. it's it's kind of hard to stop that puck i mean an elite goaltender yeah maybe does we've already said in this show Martin Jones is not an elite goaltender. He's a very good goaltender, right? I and mean, if you're the LA Kings and you have a breakaway in overtime, you're going to want it to be your elite goal scorer, oh, Kovalchuk yeah. or Kopitar. Although Kopitar's snake bitten this yeah. year. But anyway, you, the person who got the puck and got the goal is the exact same, exact person that the LA Kings would want to have gotten exactly. that chance. Yeah. And he buried it. So and that's why he gets paid the big bucks. Yeah. And and the thing is, again, let's not, just like the, the Jones um, goal against Winnipeg where he was out, let's not look at a screenshot, right? Let's take a look at how the play happened. How the play happened? Well, the, they brought the puck in the zone. I think Donskoy brought it in. They had just changed. Uh, passes the puck back to Kane. Kane is last man back because Vlasic has joined in the rush on the right wing. So Vlasic is in deeper than Kane is. Kane fires it, and it goes wide, and it rims around, and it goes out to Kovalchuk, who's mm -hmm. waiting and just takes off, right? So, again, it's it's one of these weird things where, you know, the, a missed shot turns into a break the other direction, and then are you going to blame Jones for that? I think it's just a lot of little details that they're going to yeah. close up by the time playoffs I'd, start, I'd, second half of the season starts. The only thing I think that Kane maybe could have done just differently there is either make sure you hit the net when right. you fire it or pass the puck because you know you're the last man back. Yep. That's, I mean, if you've, I think it was a three on two. It's a mental thing. Everything's just mental yeah. mistakes. Um, but, I mean, hey, we're, it's easy for us to say that from, you know, these chairs. Couch. So, yeah. <laughs> the ca is this a couch? No. Not really a couch. Two yeah. chairs. Anyway. Right. Um, but it's, you know, in the moment, he's just trying to score and win the game. Um, he's not thinking, what if I miss and this thing rims around and then Kovalchuk is off the races, right? Mm -hmm. No one's thinking that. So, I don't know. Again, I, I I do defend Jones on a lot of this because I think that the fan base can get a little too down on him, and uh, I don't think it's fair. Um, I'm okay to say you know, Jones had a bad night or Jones lit in a softy or Jones just missed it flat out or whatever the case is, but I think for a lot of these goals, you really have to look at the whole picture and see how it happened and not just... Oh, they lost, and who was in net? Jones. Jones sucks. Yeah, exactly. You know, that, that's what I think. It has to be a little bit more than that if you're going to say mm -hmm. that Jones is a bad goaltender because he's not. Right. That's and how I feel about it. That leads to tonight's game against yes. Phoenix or Arizona. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Old habits die hard. Um, I, 
tonight, uh, almost similar to LA game, they didn't look quite right to start, and Arizona's a much better team this season than they were last year. Uh, they have a lot more dangerous guys, I think, this year than last year. They're not quite up there in the standings of the Pacific, but I think they should be. I think uh, I think they're a better team than Anaheim. Um, Anaheim just has a better goalie. They're, they have an elite goalie with Gibson, but if you take him out of the equation, and he'll probably get hurt. Right. I, I would see Arizona being a bubble team and, and fighting for a playoff spot. So yep. um, not quite a basement dweller like L.A. Um, I thought they, again, tied battled the back. game up. They battled back and yeah. tied the game up. I'm, again, happy with that result where they're behind and they tie it up and right. get a point out of it. And it went to a shootout, and this time, I mean, the shootouts are just yeah. awful. I mean, I did this awesome dad joke on there that I could post on there about... <laughs> about shootouts in the NHL, but um, I just it's it's a coin toss. It might as well just be a coin toss at the end of the game to see who gets that extra point, and I think it needs to get fixed. We've talked about this many times before. Yeah. Um, but one thing I do want to talk about is the Sharks are 0-3 in the shootout. Mm. I think it's time to change up who you're throwing out there in the, in the shootouts, but you get to go to practices, and you get to see they do a shootout challenge, yeah. basically. Now, are who wins those all the time? Is it the people always it's, shooting? Is it Pavelski and it's, Couture? It's actually not uh, any one person all the time. I've seen Joe Thornton win in the shootout challenge. And okay. uh, the boys sell hard for <laughs> Joe when, when he wins that, by the way. That's um, awesome. It's, it's really cool. And yeah. when he scores, he's up on one skate, sticking the air up, fist out, like, whoa! You know, he's, he's enjoying it. He really is. Um, so I've seen him win one, and... I, <laughs> Frankly, I've seen Justin Braun um, get real close. He scored a few goals, and they had one where it wasn't the whole tournament that they do. Mm -hmm. It was just like Dell, and then they kept kind of going after him. And Braun had two goals in a row, and he deeped out Dell hard. <laughs> he really <laughs> did. Um, and I've, I've talked previously that, um, I think it was when I was talking about Brendan Dillon, like some guys, when they get off the ice, you say, you know, hey, you know, have a good game, whatever, and you get like a grunt back, you know, um, and Dillon's not that type. Braun is kind of the grunter, right? He's the kind of guy where, yeah. you know, yeah, hey, man, have a good game. <laughs> and that's it, right? And he just goes. Well, after that shootout win that he had or whatever it was, he goes and grabs a stick and he comes off the ice. Now, hey, hey, Brauner, you know, silky mitts, bud. You know, <laughs> and he starts, he's smiling and laughing. Yeah, you know, and it was like the first time I've ever seen him, like, happy and smiling and laughing Some getting off the ice. personality, basically. Yeah, I finally yeah. got to see it, you know. I wish they would show up more often, but yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. But yeah, so, I mean, there there's a lot of guys that um, do really well that you've never seen essentially taking um, taking shootouts, at least not in this season. So I think you're right. I think Pavelski, my opinion on Pavelski is he's very good in the shootout, but I think everyone's seen him do the shootout now with the you know the quick skate up and then the pull up and stop yeah. and then the back and forth and try to go five hole or whatever it is, you know? So I, I don't know. I think maybe it's just that everyone's seen it already and then they've got the scouting report on him. Mm -hmm. um, Logan's very good. Uh, Hurdle's very good. But the guys that do really well, and I've seen Sorensen have lots of really nice moves, but he doesn't tend to bury it, but he's very good and mobile. Uh, Donskoy. Donskoy's yes. another one. He's He's got really silky mitts, and he's almost built for the shootout, that guy is. I mean, he, he, I've watched him so many times, and I've tweeted it out, too. This guy works on his edges like no one I've ever seen, mm -hmm. and nobody on, on the Sharks works their edges more than Jonas Donskoy does. I mean, I thought he had hurt his leg one time because he was literally out there on one leg <laughs> going back and forth. I'm like, he he must have hurt his ankle because he doesn't want to put it, he doesn't want to put it down. Yeah. No, he was just oh, working on. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. just working on. You know, being on one skate. Mm -hmm. The guy's his, his edge work is insane. But yeah, so Jonas Donsko is another guy that goes out there um, during those and, and does a really good job. And I'd like to see him more in in the real shootouts. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but again, throw Justin Braun out there. The guy's got mitts. Who knew? Yeah. Certainly no one on the other team is going to know. Yeah, so. they wouldn't have a scouting report on it yeah. recently, so it could be thrown in. I'd love to see it. Yeah, I really would. I'd love to see, you know, oh, okay, Pavelski and yeah. Donskoy, And then Braun. how many people are going to say, fire DeBoer for putting Braun out there and oh, he doesn't everyone. score a goal? Okay, yeah, if he doesn't score a goal, yes, <laughs> right? they're going to fire him, right? <laughs> say, wow, why would he do that? <laughs> That's well, a good they point. haven't been watching him in practice. That is, yeah. No, and, and I think, again, it, it, would be, it would be awesome to see, especially if you put it in. Remember when Rafi Torres scored? Yeah. It was against LA. It was like Rafi Torres' first game or something like that with yeah. the Sharks, and um, he goes out there and you know he's One the bruiser. One of his ten games that he's played, he's the bruiser, the right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> goes out there and he scores a nice goal. I think he put a five hole on quick. Yeah. It was uh, it was awesome to see. You know, it got everybody out of their seats, and it was great. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's my take on it. So the whole shootout thing. Yeah, yeah, I want to see it gone. 
You want to see it gone? Or, or the point <laughs> system rearranged. Maybe not gone, but I the agree point with system it. rearranged. I agree with the point system rearrangement. Yeah. I like the three point would be better. Right. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> next topic we're yeah. going to talk about is real fans, which you kind of yes. alluded to in the, in, earlier in the episode. So go ahead. You, you'll, so you started off. So this again comes down to a, uh, a Facebook post. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nothing good in the world comes from Facebook posts and the keyboard warriors. You know what? And no, that's wrong because <laughs> something good came of this. Okay. It's my comments on other people's posts. Sometimes that yep. leads to people being salty and whatnot. And that's fine. You, you know, I made a post about real fans and this was weeks ago, but and I've been meeting them to working in the show, but whatever. Anyway, um, you know, there's lots of different types of fans. There's the fans that know every stat, right? Um, there's the fans that are rink rats and they play the game themselves and they understand the sport and they want to, you know, tell everybody else how it is on the ice, right? Um, there's the fans who are just flat out cheerleaders. No matter what's happening, <laughs> go team go, right? Um, and it, to me, none of those are make you a real fan. I mean, you, you the guys that have been around since 91 for the Sharks, does that make you a real fan? Makes you an old fan. Yeah, it certainly sure. does, yeah. right? I mean, we're old. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, but does it make you a real fan? No, the thing for me is, you know, everybody's on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. They're cannibalizing each other. Everybody's getting upset with each other because, you know, well, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm a real fan. I've been around since 91. Well, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm a real fan because I, I root hard for my team no matter what. You right. know, bleed teal, you know? And to me, it's, guys, you got to remember <laughs> What makes you a fan isn't your knowledge of the game or how hard you cheer. It's it's if you get an emotional response from the team, whether that's positive or negative, and the way that you choose to portray that. As long as you're emotionally charged by your team, you're a fan. Period. You you, you can show it in different ways, and that's fine. Like I said, positive, negative. You can have different knowledge of the game. You can have no knowledge of the game and just be like, I love San Jose. I love or I'm, I'm starting to like hockey. There's a hockey team in San Jose. I'm a fan. Good. You're a fan. And if they win, you cheer. And if they lose, you feel bad. That's an emotional response. You are a fan. Mm -hmm. So I just hate seeing so many people who are just cannibalizing and fighting with each other over the same thing. And it's really, you guys are all fans. Right. You know, so that I, was my take on it. I don't know. I, if, I wrote about uh, wrote about this in Barry Bias back oh. in the day. Uh, but it was more about bandwagon fans. Okay. Uh, a lot of people have hate for bandwagon fans. And I have nothing but love for bandwagon fans. Because <laughs> to me, that's when... Um, but let's say it's a it's a we'll we'll start we'll do a couple examples a kid 12 year old kid never watch hockey uh, i'm going to pick a team maybe they don't live in san jose maybe they're just you know somewhere right um and they have no affiliation they go oh i like the sharks colors i like <laughs> i like their jersey right i like the jersey which a lot of sharks fans started that way let's let's do a shout out real quick to somebody who's who's in finland even oh right. a sharks fan yeah Timu, right? Yep. Okay, so Timu Vakari, I think is his last name. I'm probably yeah. butchering that last name. I'll get Dan Grzynowski <laughs> on it right away. Right. But um, yeah, Timu, he's a guy who lives in Finland. He's a Sharks fan. Yeah. I don't know if, if Timu ever lived in San Jose or in California for that yeah, matter. Why is he a Sharks fan? Maybe you can comment on it. Yeah, Timu. that'd be great. Timu, let us know. Anyway, um, anyway uh, people, a lot of fans start off as bandwagon fans, and then they become hooked and learn more about the game, learn more about the team, and then all of a sudden they are a normal fan instead of a bandwagon fan right real fan right right <laughs> my point is like it bandwagoners come you know they come and go but yeah. to me a sign of having bandwagon fans means your team is good yeah means there's going to be a lot of people jumping on board because the sharks are doing well so why why hate on them yeah maybe they're not as knowledgeable but to me, when I go to hockey games and, and people don't understand things, yeah. I love sitting next to them and explaining yeah. the game to them. Okay, here's here's the offensive zone, the defensive zone, here's the neutral zone, here's explain icing, here's offsides. Like, Those are the two things. Everyone right. wants to know about icing and offsides. No one right. gets it. Yeah. yeah. And, and it, it's so much easier in person when you can see the whole ice. Yeah. And I go, okay, here's, here's the red line in the middle. You see that line? Now you see the other red line where the goal is it goes all the way across and the puck crosses both those lines and nobody touches it <laughs> the defenseman has to get back first and it used to be you know you get the whole no maybe touch we'll, maybe icing. we'll do a show like that like the, the fin factor explains or something like that that'd be fun, sure i think you do that you know? explains the rules yeah we okay. can kind of go over it and that'll just be a separate thing that's not like an episode or just kind of like a right. psa so you know? my neighbors my next door neighbors have never been to a hockey game and we're going to the barracuda game next week nice and so i'm gonna be sitting with them explaining the entire rules of hockey that's i excellent. just i love doing that 
So <laughs> anyway, um, I love bandwagon fans. I love all fans. It, it goes with your post of, right. of everybody's a fan. If you're a fan of the Sharks, you're a fan of the Sharks. There's no inner circles of <laughs> Shark fans like, oh, here's the fans from 91. Well, and then here's be. the fans from yeah, yeah. 98. You know, it, it, it should be you're a fan of the Sharks. Yeah, the only thing I don't like about bandwagon fans is when... Um, you're like rubbing it into other fan bases and whatnot. You know, be humble. That's all I got to say about that. But um, yeah, no, mean. I think we're on yeah. the same page. I think, you know, if everybody, as long as you've got that emotional response, and you can disagree, that's fine. I just hate seeing it. But, um, you know, as long as you've got that emotional response, understand that no matter what your background is or your level of hockey knowledge or how long you've watched the team or any of that stuff, if you have that response to a, a win or a loss or how the team's doing, you're a fan, period. That's just how I see mm-hmm. it. So that aside, I just want to get that out there. Um, <laughs> and we just go ahead and take a look at the week ahead, yep. which there's only two games, two games actually. Yeah. yeah, thanks to the the holiday season right. and everything. I yeah, think Christmas. I lost a present off of my shirt somewhere. Yeah, as I'm missing a present. Right. Yeah, so oh well. Christmas, uh, the league <laughs> shuts down where there's actually, an, it's a frozen, like there's no transactions. You mm-hmm. can't move any players or anything. Um, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and the day after Christmas, which is Boxing Day in Canada and uh, England. Do you know what Boxing Day is? Is it okay? So is Boxing Day the day that they box things up, or is it like fighting Boxing so Day? So I have a coworker okay. from England, and she explained it to me because um, it's an English thing that carried to Canada. Um, it goes back to the olden days when you had servants, okay. and <laughs> you boxed up your meal from Christmas Day and gave them the leftovers oh. and handed it to them along with a gift and something else. And so you're boxing everything up. Wow. And it. That was her explanation. I haven't looked it up on Wikipedia or anything She's else. She's just totally pulling your leg and right, it's probably. about fighting. That's yeah, all it is. Right. <laughs> it's it's the, the beginning of boxing, yeah. the sport of boxing. boxing. day. Right. Yeah. But anyway, that's, that's how she explained <laughs> it. So um, anyway... What were we talking about? We oh, can, we so coming they, up, yeah. <laughs> so they shut down. So what I like about the NHL, where the NBA, they make Christmas like the NFL has. The NFL has Thanksgiving. Okay. Like they have football all day. NBA said, okay, we'll take Christmas. So there's games in the morning, afternoon, and night on for NBA. And I think it's terrible because um, who's? Would you want to go to a game on Christmas Day? I'd no. rather be at home with my yeah. family and not working, not doing anything, not going anywhere and doing anything mm. um, the only thing that we could really do is go to the movie theater at night because that's usually the only thing that's open but um it's it's i don't know i i just don't i don't like it so i like that they shut it down i like that they freeze the roster so you can't trade anybody right. on christmas because uh, that would be <laughs> harsh man and i bet there would be some teams that would do it too that's a good point <laughs> so um it's good for i think it's good for the league to do this so anyway yeah uh two games one on thursday and that's in anaheim Right. And no. Uh, Anaheim's no, home playing here. Yeah. Sorry. At home. home, Anaheim, Thursday night. Saturday afternoon. They'll probably wear their whites and screw me up. But right. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Saturday <laughs> afternoon. Oh, no, they'll probably wear their blacks because uh, it's oh, Thursday. Thursday. Right. Yeah. yeah. So they'll probably have the stealth night. Stealth night. Yeah. Um, Saturday afternoon game again, a one p.m. game in Edmonton. Um, well, you want to start oh, with the, let's start with the Ducks. Zone. Let's start with the Ducks game. Okay. Sure. What do you? expecting out of that game i'm i'm expecting i don't want to wish i don't even want to say it because <laughs> i feel like it's going to happen i'm going to feel really bad um gibson hasn't been injured yet <laughs> is he uh is he too without saying is it, he yeah. do i don't know um no what i'm looking for again is a good rivalry between those two teams i want to see um i don't want to see us get down again i really don't want to have us have to fight back i like that we were able to fight back i like that we like you said it feels better when you get that point having been down, but I don't want to put us, ourselves in that hole. There's some individuals that I think I'd like to see uh, playing a little bit better. Obviously, Vlasic, I'd like to see him kind of snap out of it a little bit, and uh, him and Braun play a much more defensively responsible type of game that we, we're, we've we grown to expect, and mm. we've grown to know that they, they're capable of playing. Um, I want to see that. So there's some individuals that I'd like to see uh, having a really good game uh, during that that first game back after the big break, we'll also probably see Tim Heed play again because Carlson yes. will be suspended for one more game. Yes. So um, I thought he played pretty well in in tonight's game. Got a goal. He got a goal. Yeah. And got a power play goal. Um, so showcase maybe for a trade later. Um, it's good for him to step up and and do something and not just yeah. be there, but actually be on the score sheet and uh, make a difference yep. in the game. So um, we'll see one more game without Carlson. Um, 
I think what I'd like to see is the Sharks team that uh, uh, swept them in the playoffs last year. Well, sure, wouldn't anybody. <laughs> right, but I mean, I want to see them play a full game like they did in Minnesota, yeah. uh, beat down on Anaheim because they're kind of climbing in the standings. This right. is going to be a great chance for the Sharks to get ahead a couple more points because um, you're now you're not giving up points yeah. to to a team catching you. Yeah. Uh, it's better to be the team ahead than it behind. So yeah. I'd like to see them get a regulation win. I, I want to see them remind Anaheim where they belong so that Mike Johnson... <laughs> That isn't right. I don't want Mike Johnson <laughs> to be right. After the amount of of s- trash I've been slinging his way on this show, which He's he hasn't watched like, any of it anyway. Like, Finn who? Finn who, yeah. <laughs> that was episode number five, by the way. We right. titled the Finn who. Yeah. Anyway, um, I, I, I don't want Anaheim to have any sort of, let's call it hope. Right. Okay, yeah. I don't want them to have hope. I want to bury them, you know. Um, Rip the Band-Aid off. Yeah. 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 So uh, that's what I'd like to see out of the Anaheim game. Now, after that, we've got a game on Saturday, 1 p.m. against the Oilers, like you said. 1 p.m. game is not exactly our cup of tea, mm-hmm. and it is in the Pacific time zone, so it won't be like a 10 a.m. game to no, them. No, they're It'll in Mountain be... time zone. Oh, is it Mountain? Yeah, they're over one. Are they really? Yeah. I did not know. There yeah. you go. Learn, I re- learn something new every so day. So it's really a show, 2 so. p.m. game for the Sharks. <laughs> okay, so maybe they'll go. be a little bit more awake Who knows? than they were against, uh, who was it? Was that the L.A. or is it L.A. game? Yeah. Where it was earlier. They were asleep. Right. That's so, what, it is. Um, what I hate, Ken H- Hitchcock teams are the worst. <laughs> Lockdown. I they just they yeah. they lock down. So what what I'd like to see, which the Sharks are good at this season at least, is scoring the first goal. When you score the first goal against Hitchcock teams, it opens up the ice. Yeah. When it's tied or they have the lead, it's just congested and mm-hmm. it's awful. So it opens up the game. So I want to see the Sharks score first. Um, Koskikinen, I think is his name. It's the goalie. Who's taken over from Talbot for Edmonton? Uh, mm. He's been playing lights out lately. Okay. Uh, he came over from the KHL as an old. He's like thirty, and he came over for his first NHL wow. game. So um, he's been playing well. Um, again, I think it's a Hitchcock system type thing. He's a good goalie, but he's not. He shouldn't be this good. Right, right, right. So I think uh, the Sharks get in on him early, uh, score a couple goals, and open up the game. It'll be more exciting to watch, and I think the Sharks can shut them down. And uh, hopefully they get four points out of these next two games. Yeah. No, I, I'd love to see it. And again, you're right. The, that Hitchcock style of play, um, if you don't get that first goal, they're just going to lock it down. And from good defense comes good offense. So, uh, I, again, if you don't get that first goal, it's going to be really hard to score from there because as soon as you turn that puck over and you've got everybody pressuring in that zone trying to get a goal, you're going to mm-hmm. get odd man breaks the opposite direction. We've already had a problem with it this season so far, and when you have it against a team uh, like Edmonton who can who can sprint, mm-hmm. specifically McDavid, yep. um, you, you cannot afford to have odd man breaks with that team. So you'll know success when... If the Sharks at the end of the game uh, shut down McDavid, McDavid has zero points because that's very rare for any team to do that because yep. he's that good. So uh, we'll know if McDavid's not on the score sheet, the Sharks did a pretty good job. Yeah, and more specifically, probably know that Vlasic had a, a, a good game regardless mm-hmm. of what the advanced stats say because that's his job. His job is to shut down the best guys, and that's their best guy. He's probably going to be on the ice for every single shift that they can get. Now it's mm-hmm. in Edmonton, so they don't get the last change, but... Every opportunity they get, you can bet your yeah. behind that uh, they're going to put Vlasic and Braun out there against And them. that'll be the first game back for Carlson after suspension, too. So oh, he'll have true. fresh legs. That's uh, true. He'll, he has almost a week off, so yeah. uh, it'll be pretty good for, him, for to get him in there. But Edmonton is also another team like Anaheim, very close in the standings, chasing nice. the Sharks. So uh, two big games, I think, this week, even though there's only two. Yeah. Uh, they're going to be very important games for the Sharks to start separating themselves in the Pacific. Very nice. Uh, so the last thing we're going to talk about now is the merch, right? Yes. We're going to have one more week, I think, is what it is, because we have uh, this this special that we're doing for the um, hat and shirt combinations, which I don't have the yeah. sticker on me right now, but we have, I had an example of them, was uh, Redeem, no, uh, Radil, Radil, Lukash Radil, it and saying. it's up there. But yeah. um, So I had the players sign uh, all the different stickers that we have, and I was giving those away in all the orders that have a hat and a t-shirt. Mm-hmm. Still doing that, we'll continue to do that until the new year. So um, if you are a fan of the show and you'd like to support the show uh, monetarily, we would appreciate uh, you buying a shirt or yeah. an, and a hat or mm-hmm. one or the other or both or 15 of them. Um, <laughs> that'd be great too. Um, they make excellent gifts for any Sharks fans or people who are fans of the show. 
So uh, there's that. And I, you know, I wanted to make a comment on the, the, what do you call it, the sweaters here. There's a dad joke that I've been dying to, to work in and I can't figure out how to do it. So I'm just gonna awkwardly shimmy it in right now. Do you know the internal temperature of a Tauntaun? Lukewarm. <laughs> Don't you dare boo me, because it's phenomenal. And it's a dad joke and it's Star Wars related. Regardless, <laughs> so stores open. On that check note. it out. <laughs> Hashtag dad jokes. Hashtag dad jokes. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Give us all your dad jokes. Hashtag dad jokes. Oh please. boy. Yeah. The That'd floodgates be great. have been opened. I can't wait. Right. Oh, it's gonna be phenomenal. Awesome. All right. <laughs> so, with that, awkward stares aside, um, <laughs> thank you for tuning in. Uh, we uh, hope you guys have a wonderful holiday season. Merry Christmas. And we'll see you before the new year, so yep. we'll we'll uh, do a New Year's episode as well. Um, anything else you want to add? Party hats for that one. Party hats. Nope. That's good. <laughs> Very good. So we will see you guys next week. Next week. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> hey everyone, thanks for checking out the show. You can support us by following us at the Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you're listening to us as a podcast. Please, please, please give us a five-star review. And if you want to support our show, share our episode with your friends. Please leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode. And if you want us to cover anything else, let us know.